السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر نشهد ولا إله إلا الله نشهد ولا إله إلا الله نشهد أن محمد رسول الله Shadow and the Mamma Dara Sula La 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 Akbar La ilaha illallah Alhamdulillah Nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nasta'gfiru wa na'udhu bilay min shururi anfusina wa min sayyati amalina من يحدي الله فلا مذل الله ومن يضلل فلا حاجة الله وأشهر لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهر أن محمدا عمده ورسوله يا أي الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجال كثير ونساء ويتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد إن أسلك حديث كتاب الله عز وجل وحسن حدي حدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر أمور محتوفاتها وكورة محتوفة في الإسلام بدعة وكورة بدعة دلالة وكورة دلالة في النار All praise is due to Allah We praise Him and we extol Him and we seek refuge in Allah تبارك وتعالى from evil within ourselves and evil results of our wrong actions Whomsoever Allah guides can never be left astray in misguidance. And whomsoever Allah Taala allows to go astray, and there is no guide for that individual. Really, the most truthful of speech is the Book of Allah Taala, and the finest guidance is that of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And the most evil of affairs are the newly invented ones, bid'a. And every bid'a is a going astray, and every going astray leads to the hell fire. As what follows, O you who believe, itaq Allah, have the consciousness of Allah, and always speak a word that is true. As a result, Allah Taala, He will forgive us of our sins and rectify our actions. And whosoever obeys Allah and His Messenger has indeed achieved a firm handhold. To my dear Salam Iman, continuing with the series on Akhulak Islamia. The proper Islamic etiquettes and manners. Within Allah, today we'd like to speak about or touch on briefly some of the etiquettes of the Talab al Ilm, the seekers of knowledge, the etiquettes that they must have within Allah, with light tawfiq, and the help and assistance can only come from Allah Taala, as the great scholar of the Ummah. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, he has stated that knowledge is not how much you can memorize and narrate, but knowledge should be an expression of piety, taqwa. So he said, study and act upon your knowledge. So alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, as we all know, 
ever since <clears throat> the advent of the search engines that around the mid or late 1990s, a lot of people have been going to these engines and searching for knowledge or searching for rulings on Islam and on many things. There's so many online institutions and modes of study. But a lot of us have opted to do this instead of going the traditional road of seeking the knowledge from the students of knowledge who are connected to the scholars, the ulama, Rabbanin. As Allah says, First, ahlu ahlu dhikr, in kuntum la ta'alamun. That we should ask those who know, the scholars, if we do not know. Why I mention this is because in the early days, I'll take you for a little trip down memory lane. In the early days of the da'wah, how it spread in North America, the people would consult with those senior students of knowledge. For example, we have a lot of small students of knowledge who were in and around this city and other parts of the cities. They would consult with the senior students of knowledge by way of a phone. We would buy a phone card and we would set up a time where we would meet and contact those senior students of knowledge who are in direct contact with the ulama, the scholars. And we would have them give us a lecture, a mu'idha, a reminder for an hour or so. And then after that, we would have question and answer period. We had, you know, good brothers like Abu Uwais, a very well-known da'i in North America, Rahim Allah, who passed away a few years ago. May Allah have mercy on him. He was connected to the ulama. So we would buy the card, we'd buy a phone card, and we would call Sheikh, Methalan Sheikh Mukhbil in Yemen. We would contact him and ask questions. And he would give us the answers. And he would give us a daras and explain things. We would contact Sheikh, Sheikh Rabi Ibn Hadi al Madkhali and ask him questions. We would contact Sheikh Muhammad Ibn Saleh al Thaymeen. We would contact the ulama. And they would give us the straightforward Islamic lectures with the proper understanding of the book and the sunnah. And then we would follow that up with a period of question and answer. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, here in Toronto, we were connected to the brothers of the Sunnah who were in Ohio, brothers who were in Philadelphia, and other parts of North America, Alhamd, and brothers in Philly. We would contact them, we'd be together, linked on a phone lecture, and we would contact the scholars. Alhamd, there's many of us here in this city who knew the local Arabia, who knew the Arabic language. So there wasn't any problem for us to understand what the ulama were saying directly. But for those of us who did not understand Arabic, they only understood English. They were new to the da'wah. They were new to practicing Islam. Because we have many Muslims who migrated from their lands, India, Pakistan, Sudan, Trinidad, Barbados, all over the world as Muslims. They came here for a study for whatever reason. They got married. They have a child, and they grow up middle school, high school, and now they want to practice Islam. They don't want to practice cultural Islam. They want to practice the real Islam. So alhamdulillah, they're seeing the brothers who know a little bit of Arabic, and they want to learn Islam. So we would translate those lectures. We would have those lectures from Arabic translated with the Arabic and the English side by side, and we distribute. And that's how the knowledge would spread in North America. We had a direct link with ulama. And alhamdulillah, the ulama are there, numerous, plentiful. We can contact them and we can get the rulings that we need. Well, alhamd. In this city, in other cities around the world, there are many strong talab al-ilm, strong students of knowledge, whom we can contact and who have a direct contact with other students who are connected to the ulama. So Islam is not a thing where we can just be comfortable on our bed 
and Google or search whatever search engines we want or whatever we're looking for and expect to gain religious, sound religious knowledge in this way. Because Islam is a deen of connection, of sincilla, of chains, of narration. So we know that what we have of deen, of understanding, of ma'rifa, of clear, concise understanding of the rulings that are coming from the Quran and Sunnah are coming from the source, the source, in a correct way. So that none of us can just say that we, we search something up and this is what we come up with. This is what we came up with. This is the ruling. This is what it is. This is not how we understand the deen of Islam. For example, there's a very, very important hadith. The hadith of Jibril, which many of us, we know. And the ulama, they said that this hadith teaches us the etiquette and manners between the talib and the matloob. The student, the student and the one who is seeking after that knowledge. The knowledge that they are sought after. For example, this hadith, it starts off, but Umar ibn Khattab, he's saying, "Bainama nahnu julus in the Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam that al yom ida He said, "When we're sitting with the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, a man just appeared in front of us. Shadid biad thiab. He had a very clean, bright white thobe. Shadid suad shar. He had very dark hair. La yara ale athar safar." Till end of the hadith. He said that we did not see any signs of travel on him and none of us knew who he was until he came and sat down in front of the Masha of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he put his knees to the Masha of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's knees and he put his two hands on the thighs of the He put his two hands on the thighs of the Masha of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he asked the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam about Islam, Iman, Ahsan, the Sa'a, when is the, what is the faith, what is Islam, what is the faith, what is Iman, when is the hour, about the, the signs of the hour, and so on and so forth, to the end of the hadith. But he came and he sat down in front of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam with humility, and he started to question the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would give him the correct, precise answer. And Umar Khattab, he said, Fa'ajibu. He was amazed that when he would ask the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam the question, he would say, Sadaq, you've spoken the truth. He said that he's asking the question and he's confirming the answer. So they were amazed by this. Because this is not from the etiquettes of the seeker to say, yes, you have spoken the truth. We have to come, the ulama, they have explained. And you can look and you can search in the books. There's many, many books that have been translated on the explanation of this hadith. Very, very, very good explanation of this hadith you can find in many, many of the Islamic bookstores. They said that this is not the proper manner of the student with the teacher, that he should say that, yes, you have spoken the truth. We have to come with our cups empty. So he said, yes, what you said is true. So the Sahaba, they were perplexed that he is asking a question and saying what you're saying is true. To the end of the hadith, to the point I want to make is, as seekers of knowledge, people who are inquisitive and curious and we want to learn, we have to come with a humble heart. We're not trying to confirm what we know. Because this is not how we're going to gain knowledge. We have to go out in search of the knowledge from those people who are rasikhuna fil ilm, those who are firmly grounded in knowledge. And then along the way, we have to make dua. As Allah says, Rabbi zidni ilman. Oh, my Lord, increase me in knowledge. Allah He did not say in the whole Quran for Allah, for Muhammad to increase himself in anything except sound knowledge. Not in wives, not in money, not in status, except in knowledge. And we should say this to our Zidni Elman. Oh my Lord, increase us in knowledge. There's a very well known hadith which is Mutafiq al Ali. It's on in Sahih Bukhari and Muslim. That the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he said, Whoever man Allah bihi khairan, fi deen. 
whosoever Allah intends good for that person, then he gives that person the correct understanding of the deen, the fiqh, the understanding of the deen. The noble sheikh, Muhammad Aman bin Ali Jami, he said that this means the faham sahih, the correct understanding. This is what we have to strive and be hungry for. We cannot seek the knowledge by laying down in a comfortable bed and searching and saying that we have arrived at the right understanding of the deen. Because the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, Hadith Abu Radha Ranhu, Man salaka tariqan yatamasu fihi ilman, sahallah lahu tariqan ila jannah. Whoever takes a path in search of knowledge, then Allah Azawajal will make his path easy to Al-Jannah. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, there's another hadith, in the Musnad of Imam Ahmed in Hanbal and Sahih also, that the Prophet Wasallam said, Adunya mul'una, mul'una ma fiha illa dhikrullah, wa man wala, wa alim wa muta'allim, awqa maqa sallallahu alayhi wa that the whole of this dunya, this whole of this world is cursed. And everything in it, except for the dhikr of Allah, the remembrance of Allah, and the scholar and his student. So we have to understand, my dear Iman, that it was the way, the methodology, the tariq of the Salaf and Asali to advise the younger students of knowledge that they should first start their journey by seeking knowledge of their akhlaq, mannerism. The younger students should acquire knowledge of character before knowledge of the Quran. And also Ibn Mubarak. He would advise the people of Hadith. Al-Hadith, he said, you are in greater need of a little bit of manners than a great deal of knowledge. He also said that the Salaf al-Saleh would seek manners and then seek knowledge of the Hadith. This is because Abu Radha who said that the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that إِنَّمَا بِعِثُّ لِيَتِمُّ صَالِئَ الْأَخْلَاقِ That the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that verily, I was sent to perfect good moral character. Imam Malik, Ibn Alas, the Imam of Dar Hijra, he said that, Ta'lam al-adab, qabla ta'lam al-ilm. He said that, we should learn adab, we should learn manners, before we embark on learning knowledge. Adab, akhlaq, manners, is very important, for the knowledge to benefit the person themselves and others. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said that the knowledge, the method, the example of this ilm, wa huda, wa nur, that I was sent with, is like the rain that falls down on three different types of earth. He said one earth is fertile, and it soaks up the rain, and it brings forth vegetation. One is dry, and does not take in the water. It does not take in the water. Another, it takes the water, and it makes a basin. The earth doesn't benefit it, but it just collects the water. We want to be that fertile soil that the rain of the knowledge will, we will get, we will gain when we seek it, even a small amount of knowledge with proper understanding and with proper akhlaq is beneficial not only to the person, but to other people. Imam Manik, he would say that my mother, when I was young, would dress me up nice and tell me, Go to Sheikh Rabi, go to your Sheikh Rabi, and take from his manners before you take from his knowledge. The Prophet ﷺ, he said that, Talib al Farid al Kulli Muslim. The seeking of knowledge is essential for every Muslim. Every Muslim male must become knowledgeable in their deen. This is a very important quality that we must embark on. But we cannot put the cart before the horse. We have to have refined manners. The knowledge will not benefit us or anyone else in our community if we do not have the proper manners. There's many, many hadith. And this brings me to another very important point. That we have to seek help with not only our manners, but with our pens. If we're really sincere about seeking the proper Islamic knowledge and being grounded in our Islamic knowledge, then we need to seek help with a pen. 
and start to write down these things. Start to take notes. Jot these things down. There's a hadith connected in Musa Imam Ahmed ibn Hanbal and a son of Abu Dawood that Abdullah ibn Amr said, I used to write down everything that I heard from the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to preserve it. To preserve it. Many of us have the ability to read and write. I don't think anyone here in this country does not know how to read and write. But which one of us is taking it upon ourselves to write down the knowledge? If we're sincere about gaining knowledge, to debate? No. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu said, those people who seek knowledge only to show that they're knowledgeable or to debate with the scholars, a nod, a nod. The fire, the fire. Abdul bin Abdul bin As, he said that, I used to write down everything that I heard from the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam so as to what? So as to preserve it. And the Quraysh, they got annoyed with me because of this. They said, you write down everything that the Prophet Sallallahu speaks, but he speaks when he's angry, and he speaks when he is pleased, and he's different emotions. So then I stopped. I refrained from writing down the saying of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Then I went back to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, I informed him. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, pointing to his mouth, he said, Aqtub. He said, write. He pointed to his mouth. He said, write down the sayings. Write it down. Because I swear by the one who holds my hand, my soul in his hand, that nothing comes out of my mouth except the truth. We have to try our best to preserve the knowledge. If we're sincere about gaining the knowledge, we have to come with the right intention with our cups empty, and Allah will fill it up for us with proper knowledge and correct understanding. Remember that the Messenger of Allah said that the way to preserve the knowledge is by writing it down. And if we're sincere, then Allah will give us much. So may Allah help us and bless us to preserve the knowledge by perfecting our moral conduct. Amin, amin, amin. Bismillah, salatu salam, rasulullah, wa ala alihi, wa sahabi man tabi huda, wa bad. Let us end off our khutbah today with another great sahabi, Abu Ridhul Anhu. He was one of those Asaba Sufa who left from his home in Yemen just to be with the Masha of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He was considered as the hafiz of this ummah the one who memorized, the memorizer of this ummah. And he couldn't read or write. And he would say about himself, he said that there isn't anyone amongst the Mahajirina Ansar who has more knowledge than me. Allahu Akbar. What a statement. He only stayed in the company of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam three years. Three years he was with the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He said, there isn't anyone who has memorized more hadith than me, except Abdullah ibn Amr, ibn As, because he was able to read and write. And he said to him, you have more knowledge than me because you're able to read and write, but I have a better memory than you. And he would say about himself, Abu Rehra, the one who left from his home just to be in the company of the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He left from his home, from his mother, from his family, to be in the company of the Prophet ﷺ, he would say that I underwent such hardship. And if you can see us suffering and surviving on a starvation diet, myself and the Sahaba Sufa, who did not have any home, and they would stay in the masjid of the Rasul ﷺ to seek the knowledge, just to watch the Messenger of Allah ﷺ, and listen to his statements. And if they could write, they could write. But those of Sabah Sufa, they had no tribe. They had no tribe. They had nobody to give them the stampings and food and provision or anything. They only survived after whatever little charity would come to the Masjid of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They had no home. There's one narration I want to leave us off with. The collection of Sahib Imam Bukhari, the Abu Ridhul Anhu, said about himself that when I was afflicted with severe hunger, I would go around in, in the company of the companions and ask him about an ayat of Quran and walk with them, 
hoping that they would invite me to their house for a meal. One day I was walking, and I was suffering from extreme hunger. I seen Abu Bakr Sadiq, and I asked him about an ayat of Quran, and he kept walking, not inviting me to his home. I seen Umar, I asked him about an ayat, and he kept walking. And then I seen the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and then he understood what was going on inside of me. The Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, said, Ya Abu Hur. He used to call him the father of the kitten, because Abu Huraira used to walk around with a small kitten in his khamis, his small pet kitten. He said, Ya Abu Hur, come with us. Come with us. Let's go. Abu Huraira, he went with the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, to his home. When the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam arrived at his home, he found a bowl of milk. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam he asked his family, "Whose milk is this? Who sent it?" He said, "Family, such and such, so and so sent it to you as a gift." So then the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said to Abu Huraira, "Go and call Ashab al-Suffa. Tell them to come." So they all came. Abu Huraira he said, narrating the hadith about himself. He said that I thought within myself that if I invite all of those men, and there are maybe seventy or more men, to this small bowl of milk, there wouldn't be anything left for me. This is what Abu Huraira is thinking about himself. But semana wa atana, I have to hear and obey. So he went and he called Ashab al-Suffa, told them to come, and they sought permission, and they all entered the house one after the other, and they took their seat in the house of the Messenger of Allah. Abu Rera, he said, now the people are here. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said to Abu Rera, now the people are here. Serve them the milk. So he said, I went to each one of them one by one, serving them the milk. And they all drank the milk until they were full. And then they drank until they were full, all of those men until they left. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he looked at me. Abu Rera saying, he looked at me and said, it only remains you and me. Abu Rehra. Abu Rehra said, yes, you have spoken the truth, O Messenger of Allah. After all of those men drank from that bowl of milk, there was still milk remaining in the bowl. Abu Rehra was standing up, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was sitting down, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said to Abu Rehra, take the milk, sit down and drink. Abu Rehra, he took the milk and he drank. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, Ishrab, drink more of the milk. He drank more of the milk. Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi said, drink, ishrab, drink more of the milk. And he kept drinking. Then Abu Rehra said to the Prophet Sallallahu the one who sent you with the truth, the one who sent you with the truth, I have no more room for any more milk. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi said to Abu Rehra, give me the bowl, let me drink. Then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi he sat down while he was sitting and he drank the remainder of the milk. Why I mention this, my dear Salam Niman, although Abu Huraira was suffering from extreme hunger and he would faint, he still maintained the proper etiquette and protocol. He was the person who was told by the host to bring the people in and the person who serves must be the last person to eat. This is the etiquette that we have to implement. If we really want to benefit from our knowledge, we cannot say that this is a small sunnah. This is an insignificant hadith. This is not very important. There are things more important than this. Anhu, as much as he was hungry and he had those thoughts in his heart and his mind, he followed the order of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and they were all blessed. Ashab al-Sufa was blessed. Up until today, none of us, none of us can do without the hadith of Abu Hurairah Anhu. So may Allah Azza wa bless us and make us of those who are eager to seek the knowledge with the proper akhlaq. Those of us who are eager to seek out the knowledge where our cup's empty. And we go and find and search out those halakats, those study circles, with those senior and small students of knowledge who have a connection with the ulama rabbanin. May Allah Azza wa bless all of us and guide us and give us that love for the real knowledge, the love of really seeking the knowledge so that we can Get closer to Allah to Barakatal. Amin, Amin, Amin. In Allah, we will be able to say, Ya Ilatina Aminu. So, I must have seen Al-Huma Salila Muhammad, while Ali Muhammad. Come, Salita Allah Ibrahim, while Ali Ibrahim, in the Kahamidu Majid. Al-Huma Barakala Muhammad, while Ali Muhammad. 
كما باركت لا إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد ربنا عاتني فتن حسنا وفرك رسول الله قم صلاة